Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on chapter six. And chapter six is all about files and exceptions. We're actually skipping the exceptions part. Uh, we're only gonna do the first two sections of this chapter, but I did include slides for exceptions as well as links to sample code. So if you are curious about it, I don't expect any of you to do it, but uh, it never fails that if I don't include something, I'll get someone that will email me and say, hey, how do I do this? Uh, sorry, so I, I left some examples for that in there. All right, so uh, let's talk before we get started though, you must use REPL.IT. So the to be in order to use files and folders, we have to use REPL.IT, and I'll show you some examples of that here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, we can't use the visualizer at PythonTutor.com. It's not written in to be able to do that. Okay, so maybe someday, uh, you know, he'll add it, but for now, it's not there. So uh, anyway, so so that's really important. So using REPL.IT for all this stuff. Um, make sure you watch the videos. Okay, so uh, you have a couple videos for this first section and then you'll see section 6.2. And then the two videos that you'll see down at the bottom of the module, the links that are listed. The first one is an introduction into chapter 6.2. So when 6.2 first starts, the uh, other video is him, go, and it's only five, six minutes, this other video, and it walks through doing the first programming uh, you know, exercise that's in the book. It's 6.1. Uh, we do not actually have that assigned as a homework assignment for you, but it's a great way for you to maybe right before you get, you know, you finished everything, you're ready to start your assignments, uh, roll into to that video and just kind of watch it real quick. And it's a good little uh, overview from Tony Gattis on just getting started and doing a real basic program there. So, uh, so anyway, highly recommend those okay so the sections we're going to be covering 6.1 6.2 the videos you know from tony gas that's why i put that there we're skipping 6.3 it's just a little tiny thing on uh, processing records well it has a lot of stuff in it but um it's a short section where we're kind of skipping i'm just sticking with this one 6.2 for you this week to give you you know a little bit of uh experience using files and folders especially with REPL. i wanted you to be able to do it online uh, and then sections we're skipping or exceptions sorry we're, we're skipping all right so Interaction file output and or input output. So this is not rocket science to anyone, but um, when we see writing data to, that just means you know you're saving data uh, in a file or to a file, and then the output file that we have, that's where it's, the data is actually being written. So our program so far, what we've been been doing is uh, the program is executing in RAM. We're using it to uh, you know to store whatever kind of data that we have, whether we're asking inputs from the user or whatever, it executes it. Once we close that out, that data is gone. Uh, I know there's you know, some exceptions with the way that Python Tutor does the uh, embedded links, but uh, for the most part, like it's gone, you're not gonna see that again. And uh, so we still lose that data. So what we're going to be doing now is creating a file to store data for our, uh, you know, use later on or to do something else. You'll see you're going to do a random number program where you're going to generate random numbers. There's all sorts of little things you can do and we're going to create these particular files and they will save in REPL for us. So it's really, really pretty cool. I I like using it. So anyway, it's fine. I think you'll see that you'll like it too. All right, so writing data to a file. So here we go. We've got, uh, you know, copied from RAM to the file. So if we have these variable names uh, and we're putting this data in, we're gonna save it directly onto a disk. Now I know this is a disk that you probably are, maybe never use again, uh, but imagine, you know, a hard drive or, uh, you know, whatever device you might use to store things on. Okay, so we're, that's us going to be writing. And I know this is, you know, not a big revelation to anyone. This is not, not that big a deal, but but anyway, I just want to talk about it just really quickly. Same thing when we see reading data from. So you'll see that in there, um, just taking the data from a file, uh, the input file, that's where we're reading the data. And so we have three kind of steps that we're going to use when we do these programs. We're going to open a file, and it's very important the way that you open the files. In the next video, I'll talk uh, about the ways that we'll do that. Uh, we'll process the file, uh, including writing back to it, and then close the file down so that uh, you know, the computer knows we're done with it. Okay, so uh, same kind of thing reading in. So you're copying the stuff from whatever storage device you have into RAM, uh, and it's all referenced by variables, and we just kind of roll with it that way. Okay, so the two types of files that you'll typically see with this kind of stuff, I just, just want to mention this, we will see text files, which we will use, and then binary files. Now, binary files, uh, data is not converted to text for us to understand. That's what the program uh, is going to use. Now, if 
uh, you know, we want to use a program to read it. That's great. But for us right now, just to keep it simple and you can see it in uh, REPL, so it's kind of nice. Uh, we're just going to use a text file and we'll be able to see what the data is all in real time uh, as it's created and it makes it makes it nice for us. So um, so we have this. That, that's basically all we're going to be using this chapter is this. Also down at the bottom, uh, two ways to access it. Uh, for this chapter with what we're doing, we're doing sequential access, which is kind of like how we start out with programming where we start the first line and work our way straight down. Okay, and that's the way that we're going to uh, be dealing with data. We could use direct access uh, or random access so you can jump to any uh, point in the file. But for us, this chapter, uh, we're going to stick with sequential. Okay, a couple other things just really quickly uh, in this one. We have um, file name extensions, so you'll notice this in REPL. I want to show you an example here uh, in a few minutes, but we're going to be use uh, our, our file name extensions. So the characters that are at the end of a file name, uh, and you have the period, so like .txt for text file, .py, so that's our Python uh, extension. So it, it just says what type of data is there, kind of like with uh, all like this file that you have right now with PowerPoint, you know, if it's PPTX now, I think, uh, that's a PowerPoint file. Same kind of thing. So we're going to be using text and we're going to be using .py as well. Okay. And uh, in the next video, I'll talk more about this, but just basically with uh, our little file object that we're creating. So with file objects, we have, uh, we're really going to be referencing them with the variable name. Essentially, what, the way it works is uh, the program creates a, a file object in memory, and the file object is just an object that's associated with, uh, you know, whatever file that you're using, whatever specific file that you're using, uh, and it provides a way for the program to work with that file. So, for example, in your programs, you'll have uh, variable references that will, uh, you know, reference this you know, the particular file object. And then those variables are going to be used to carry out any operations. So um, we'll see some examples in the next one. I'll talk about in the next video and uh, I'll show you in REPL live kind of how, um, kind of how that works. So it's not really that big of a deal, but uh, there's a little graphic here um, that, I, that I sold from the book that just has, you know, the little variable name referencing the, uh, you know, file object that's associated with this particular file, but not really that big a deal. Okay, let's take a look at REPL here real quick. Let me pull this up. And I'll pull up this program. Uh, this is uh, a program that has actually quite a bit of stuff in here that I've commented out and, and different things. But what I really want you to focus on is this section in here. Now, we really haven't used this yet. Uh, most of the time when I open it, it's like, oh, I'm going to drop this over here and get rid of it. Uh, but for now, we, uh, I want to show you how we're going to be using this because this is our file structure. And uh, REPL included this. It wasn't in their initial build, but they've been adding. They, they keep adding things all the time. The interface changes. They update it. They added all sorts of stuff. This is a great, great site. Uh, so when uh, REPL.IT, when they put this in here, it, it made it really nice for us. So in this particular uh, program, you can see we have two files. And so we have main.py and names.txt. So if I click on names.txt, you see it here, and it pops up in the tab. Okay, so these two programs are in here. You have to be very careful about how you're coding things, what you're putting in. You can get a lot of different things in here. You can create folders, all sorts of things. So you can see these buttons up here. So add a file, add a folder, or a little hamburger menu here. We have all this little these options here too. Um, in fact, you'll use upload file you'll use this particular option with uh, some of the programming assignments that you have so you'll notice I think there's two programming assignments where right underneath the assignment in uh, in the canvas module you'll see I think one of them is names.txt just like this one and one of them is numbers I think .txt and so um, you'll have to uh, upload those files so the way we do is you just click on it and find that that particular file and it will load it in there. So if I come in here and I go, oh, I just did this. So it goes to my previous location. You may have to search through your, uh, you know, explore and, and find the particular file. Oops, I already have one in here. I'm going to rename this one. In fact, let me show you how to do that. If the name is off, you can click on something and just say rename. And I already uploaded this file. So anyway, so I don't know. I'll just call it names, whatever. And uh, change that. So I can click someplace else and change it. And there you go. So, um, so there's that little piece. If you let me go back and show you how to upload the file real quick. So we're going to add a file uh, into this. 
um, we're going to you can upload two here but either way this will this will add in a little blank and you can type something in here so maybe you have another I don't know demo.txt something like that um, I don't really need this but I'll leave it there I guess uh, and then but if you want to add a folder so you've downloaded the the full the file from uh, oops, not folder sorry uh, upload a file so a little little menu here and um, you have to find it on your particular drive so you've gone into canvas you've clicked on names.txt uh, you've downloaded it to your computer now we're going to go ahead and um, use this upload feature if I click on it and then I can say open and it will load it in here now sometimes uh, with this file structure piece it may not show up like instantly like it just did for me here uh, so once you've done it go ahead you may have to refresh your uh, browser window just to, to kind of update it so it just depends if they're really busy sometimes it lags just a, just a you know a little bit but uh, don't panic uh, it, it will be there uh, so anyway, so just really quickly again one more time click on the little dot 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 here click upload file after you've downloaded it from canvas and then you just have to navigate to it find it and when you just click on it and you say open oh I already have it in there but you'll see uh, it will just show up in there Okay, so um, so anyway, so this is Rumble. This is the little section that we're going to be using. If you want to get rid of a file like this little demo.txt, click on the, the little menu there, click delete, say yes, delete this file. Um, in fact, I don't need this one either. Then delete that one. Yes, delete this file. And then uh, and then that goes from there. Now in the next video we'll talk about this piece right here. So how we're actually opening it, what we're doing with it, creating creating, uh, you know, an ability to work with the file.